welcome to episode three of the Weaver Birds. We're coming to you every fortnight to talk about knitting, weaving, spinning, and all of the fibre arts and things that um, are keeping us going through this lockdown. My name's Kathy. I'm from Lazy Kate Textiles, and this is Heather, Inquisitive Weaver on Instagram. And um, this week we're going to be a little bit spinning heavy. We've been um, asking for questions uh, from you with a bit of a spinning clinic. Um, but we'll go through our other we, weaving and knitting first before we uh, we head there. So if those are your things that you're interested in, then uh, we'll get right into them. Um, I've moved into uh, the container. Not the past fortnight, I've been um, we've been podcasting from my boat, uh, but I've moved Alexa. Who it never occurred to me that Alexa was movable. Oh, she's woken up as well. And um, so I've moved into the container where I do most of my work and hopefully it's a little bit more interesting than my bedroom um so welcome heather how's it been for the last fortnight for you yeah it's, it's been okay it's uh, as we were saying it's getting a bit harder isn't it going along in lockdown so i don't know what week we're on now seven or eight or something oh, i have no idea i know that my teeth are starting to suffer i'm saying it's the tea i'm saying it's the tea not the red wine but um <laughs> definitely desperate to go and and visit a dentist. Uh, I'm drinking so much tea, I'm getting bored of tea, so I'm having to like buy ginger tea and loads of different flavours of tea just to mix it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just change to white wine. I think that that'll yeah. uh, that'll solve my problem. Or rose halfway between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> Yeah, so I haven't been weaving as in uh, as much as I'd like, so I haven't been weaving every day, but I'm still weaving on this scarf with the dyed gradient. But I've gone through the turquoise, through the natural colour silk, and I'm well into the pink. And then I can see on the coming up over the back bar or the back beam is a, a deep purple. So I'm getting to the end because the deep purple is the very end of the uh, warp. So yeah it's it's been a really enjoyable weave and it's really easy to get into the rhythm of weaving it and uh, I think it's going to be very drapey and lovely when it comes off so I can't wait and I, I can't wait to start I was thinking I should start warping up my next project so I think we're both going to be doing the same project the Haldral um tea towels mm. uh, you... if we ever get to do it <laughs> um, well I I um I've, I've got my my threads arrived for my fine weaving so those are the colors i've chosen the the turquoise is, is um slightly slightly brighter than i thought it was going to be but actually the first delivery didn't arrive um to me and I, um i don't know what the lady's called i should i said i would look that up didn't i um but the lady from my fine weaving yarns i rang her up and she sent out the delivery again um no questions asked and she said she'll wait for the the other one to uh, to go back to her so i just thought that was a, a wonderful service yeah um, she seems like a really nice lady and i would definitely order from her again lovely. oh that's really nice she is very lovely yeah um, so but i also really, really nice colors you've chosen i really like them yeah yeah i, I like them they are um, you know me i tend to go for muted shades and these are much brighter than that but probably get me out of my comfort zone which is probably what I need to need to uh, do at the moment and um, experiment with colors experiment with different sort of things and effects and um, I also had to put on extra heddles you got extra heddles as well didn't you do I haven't oh, well, I haven't put them on yet but um, yeah well in case um, anybody doesn't know your heddles your thread goes through the heddles and with the Erica loom that we've both got and um, I think it's 200 you get 200 heddles yeah. And for the uh, tea towels, you need getting on for 500 heddles, really. And so mine arrived and um, I, they came from Weft Blown, um, which is another lovely uh, company to, to order from, really, really helpful. But um, I, they've got little ties on them and you're supposed to yeah. leave the ties attached. Yes. Yeah. So under no circumstances, people who buy heddles take those red ties <laughs> off. Unless you want to spend the whole day putting these things on one at a time, you can just slide that where, where Heather's thumbs are. You just slide that over. It's so easy. You don't take the tie off. When I was, that was a day of my life, when I was building my the Erica, I, I threaded them on, 
and then I was um you have to divide them don't you take half of them for each shot yeah. and so I put them on and then I got the second you know the other rods put through and I counted them off and put the other half on and so as, as I was like separating the, the other four rods that I basically had on, on one place and I'd cut the thing and I pulled it like the two away to go and put them in with the ends on the end and uh, it, they, they just all came off oh. <laughs> and I was like oh no <laughs> so then I had to like go along and just place each one <laughs> just like yeah. well, I was a bit like that yeah. I had to take the four shafts off yeah. take the four shafts off and I balanced them on the warping frame so that I could like slide one on to, to another and it was a job that should have taken half an hour at the very most and it took practically all day. So that was a lesson learned. I have to keep saying all these mistakes I keep making, I have to keep saying, well, at least I've, le I've learned something. It's been worth it because I've learned something. So that was very annoying. Yeah. But um, so that's why I, my, my weaving has been a little bit uh, held up, but I am um, getting on with the warping at the moment. So hopefully in a fortnight, I might have a tea towel. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So go on the knitting. Are you? I have, are you doing I have, with your knitting? I have quite a bit of knitting, to be fair. And it's all socks. I'm sorry, but I have turned into a crazy sock lady during lockdown. <laughs> it's, I have actually cast on two other things. I cast on a shawl and a jumper, but I'm not ready to show them with the world yet. All right. So, okay. Um, I finished this individual sock, and this oh. yarn is from the Yarn Badger. Um. Fire, it is called Fireside, so it's a self-striping sock. Um, I just, I, I, to be honest, I loved, I loved all the colours. Each section, I was like, "Ooh, that's a really nice section," and then I'd be like, "Oh, that's a really nice section." <laughs> so I, it's really nice, and it's um, merino and bamboo, which I've never used um, a yarn with bamboo in before. So I finished that one, and that's the classic heel that I've always done, and then. With um, so I talked about the Rita sock last time, and it was in the yarn I got from you in Byrony. But I kept on making a mistake, and I, I had decided that I just wanted to do a plain sock. So I, at first I was like, I'll just put it aside, sorry, and um, not knit it, and until I feel like I want to. But I was like, I was really, really loving the colours, and just at the moment I have gone crazy for like pinky purple colours, um. So I decided to rip it out and just knit it as a plain sock. And I did an afterthought heel, my first ever afterthought heel, which went well, but I've got, um, it's quite holy where I've joined and picked up the stitches. So I'm gonna have to like try and like de holy it. it. Um, and hopefully next time when I knit the second sock, I will try harder to not get big holes in it. So, That's lovely though, I like that. That's nice. I, I really like it. I really The colours aren't coming across very well on my screen, but is that better? That's lovely. Yeah, oh, that's lovely. It's just gorgeous. It really reminds me of um, raspberry riffle ice cream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the whole time I was knitting, I was like, I really want some ice cream. <laughs> but I'm lactose intolerant, so I can't. <laughs> oh. um, and then finally, I also, so I've knit three only individual socks. Um, this one is with my own hand spun yarn um, and this fibre was from Spin, Spin City UK um, and it, <laughs> it's Cinderella socks, the uh, fibre and it's like this really lovely purple, turquoise and white, it's not coming up, I don't know, my screen's not... No, it's lovely. Was real, but, you can um, see the texture of the hand spun, yeah. it's really nice. Um, so that was really fun. It's really quick. I literally knit it in less than 24 hours. So oh, wow. that was fast. So now I'm going to have to knit the uh, second sock for each of those <laughs> pairs. <laughs> but I made some sock, some acquisitions, some yarn acquisitions. If you don't mind me talking about them. So um, this is an, uh, they're all self striping sock. So I, I seem to have got into a phase of just buying self-striping at the very moment. So this again is the Yarn Badger um, and it's called Self-Addressed Love Letter and it's merino and nylon and it's just um, pinks and purples and, and it's got turquoise and blue in there as well. 
That is that, lovely. That looks lovely. And very similarly, um, I had an issue with postage with this as well. So she posted it out to me before lockdown. Then I missed the delivery. And so it got taken to the post office. But before I could go to the post office, lockdown started. And then I tried mm -hmm. to get it re-delivered to the flat. But it turns out because it was signed for, it couldn't be delivered there. And then I couldn't get it delivered here because I'm in technically in a different, um, um, what do you call it, county right oh, now. Right. So I'm not in Merseyside. So I couldn't. And so it got returned to sender and she very kindly posted it back to me. I paid for postage because it wasn't her fault, but uh, very, I'm very happy that she managed to sort that out for me. So very excited to knit with that. And then this is a... Um, for, from Stripey Cat Yarn, I've got two sock sets, so they're just 70 grams of yarn, which should lead, mean that I shouldn't have any scrap yarn left over. Um, good, yeah, and I think, I think when I looked her up, she was from, because I bought her on Etsy, that she was from Latham. I might be wrong. So that's not far, is it? From Latham? Yeah. Wow. No, that's really close. I'll have to look that up again. I remember thinking, oh, that's, that's really nearby. Um, so this one's called Highlighter and it's very bright and so it's like got fluorescent pink, yellow and orange with um, black and grey stripes with a very fluorescent pink for the um, cuffs and the heel. They will be so good for socks. <laughs> yeah and then this is called um, Grello Mellow, I'm sorry, Grello Cat at Midnight and this is yellow and teal and white and grey with a contrasting yellow for the uh, heel and cuff. And so... Very nice. It's a good idea to have them only 70 grams so yeah. that you don't waste any. Yeah, I think that's a really nice idea. At first when yeah. it came, because I ordered sock set, and I did sock set and I didn't really think about it, I was like, is that enough? But I read and it should be enough. So I'm looking forward to casting them on. Um, so that's... That's that lovely. Thing. Yeah, they're really bright. <laughs> So that's, I think, the difference between us two is I often go for really bright colours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it'd be nice to, if she is very local, that, yeah. as local as that, then it's really good to support somebody that local, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, so they were fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to casting on. I don't know what to cast on next, but I don't need to worry about it for a while. I've got yeah. <laughs> three, <laughs> three tests. The ones that keep you busy. Yeah. Well, I am... Um, so here's my socks, these socks, the never ending socks. So there's my first sock uh, with my place, set, place marker for the afterthought heel. And I have many socks like this because I knit them because I like just doing the knit stitch, continental knit stitch, knit around and around, and then never put the, the afterthought heel in. So I've got a lot of these, which are just like tubes, which never get worn. So I did the other heel, the other, sorry, the other sock, and, and I've put, <laughs> I put the place marker in the wrong place. So the place marker for the heel, there's the toe. And the place marker for the heel starts there and goes around to there. So the person who will be wearing those is going to have a heel <laughs> where their ankle is. <laughs> so it was supposed to be a present for my friend, but I just feel like I can't send them to her for the heel in the ankle <laughs> and I don't want to undo it either so I think I'll give them to my daughter and she doesn't mind she she'll she'll wear them whatever but you know you know when you've when you've knit I've knit loads of socks loads of tubes that should be socks um but this does not help my love-hate relationship with knitting <laughs> so there we go I've almost got two socks but oh, um, the colors are gorgeous them. though that's definitely one of my favorite colors <laughs> I do, I, I do enjoy it. I just yeah. don't pay attention. That's my problem. If I'm if I'm knitting like that, I'm probably watching telly at the same time. So, um, or I knit in the evening. That's why I pulled out my my Rita sock and uh, I cast on a shawl and it's got lace work in, and I, I knit the section of lace work and then like the center, which is like a spine going up, so you can see the center. It's like normal, normal, and then suddenly it's like over here on the left. <laughs> 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 I was like, and then the jumper I started knitting, it's a really beautiful, it's called like the Felix Pullover and it's got lace work on the sides and it's, I've done like, like three repeats now of the lace work and it's looking, it looks beautiful and I haven't made any mistakes but I was just like, 
when I started noticing the mistakes in the Rita sock and, and the shawl, I was like, I'm just going to put that down. <laughs> Stick yeah. Playing socks. Yeah. I wouldn't mind, um, but I still, I still would feel, even though we're not really doing anything for the, in the day, I still feel wrong just sitting knitting in the day. So I knit in the evening, but then I've also having a drink of wine in the evening. So maybe that's what's throwing me. Maybe I need to wear teeth and knitting, teeth and sock knitting to lay off the wine completely. I think that's, what, that's what's going on there. I'm just drinking gin. Oh. <laughs> that's the that's the answer yeah <laughs> it's probably why i've made my mistakes because it is my, i'm knitting mainly in the evenings as well so stick there. some lemon in your uh, in your gin that'll solve the teeth issue i'm gonna shut up about teeth now so <laughs> so is that all you've done for uh, for knitting yeah that's that's all i've done this week well this these um, spinning questions then we asked we asked some um questions asked for questions about spinning if you've got any if you're spinning at home and you've got any um any questions any queries anything you're struggling with um then you know we asked and we got three three i think three is enough isn't it do you know what? i'm just going to put my phone on silent <laughs> it's whistling right okay so the first one um British Fiber Art, which is um, a really uh, good uh, magazine, which is all about spinning and weaving and, and textiles. Um, very supportive of uh, local producers as well. And they shared the, uh, the question on there. So a lady came forward who is called Gladys Sheep. <laughs> and she asked, how does she even get started? Um, so uh, it's more difficult at the moment obviously because we're all um in lockdown but um i would say if you were wanting to uh, begin spinning using a wheel if you can find somebody who can help you whether that's a guild or a spinning teacher and um, this will really really help you if you can have somebody who will help break up the process because it's quite it takes quite a lot of coordination when you're starting off so if you can get somebody to treadle for you which is usually press the pedal while you're having a go with the with the fiber which is called drafting so if you can get somebody to treadle for you while you get your head around drafting and then when you're confident with your drafting then you would uh, then you'll have a go um, at the treadling as well so it's not ideal at the moment really uh, there's loads of youtube uh, videos uh, but ideally i think the quickest way is to is to get somebody to help you not many people sit down and just spin. Annoyingly, Heather did. She just sat down and just did it. <laughs> but but mainly people aren't like that. I remember Heather. you you treadling for me. Yeah, oh, I don't remember that. I remember it was probably for about five minutes. <laughs> and then Gladys asked about. So, have you got any? Sorry, Heather, have you got anything to add? Well, I, I would say um, if you're a bit more nervous and don't have a spinning wheel at the at this time. You can always try um, a drop spindle and so this is a, a Turkish drop spindle and I really like them I really like the smaller drop spindles I don't like ones with weight on but that's that's my personal preference but there's also like drop spindling classes on um yeah what was I gonna say craftsy or blue is it blueprint yeah, now blueprint. um and I'm sure there's YouTube videos out there as well but yeah drop spindles are really nice because you can also you because you don't have to treadle you can put the spin in um the twist in and then you can hold it between your legs which you can't see and then you can then do the drafting above and let the twist go into what you're you're drafting and that way you can br in a way you're breaking up the um spinning aspect of it and then once you get the hang of it you can just spin and as it's spinning around you can draft so mm -hmm. that's that's another option um and i, I did try a bit of drop spindling before I came to um, Kathy's um, class. Well, I hated it. I did hate it before then. <laughs> but I, I had a, a really heavy, heavy drop spindle with a top with a top whirl on it, and I, I just found it really difficult. But um, I, I've never took to drop spindling either. I've tried it a couple of times, and it wasn't um, it wasn't quick enough. Yeah, for me really. I wanted to I wanted to get going. 
I am, I, I mainly, so this, I get little samples of, of fiber from, I just, I buy little samples if I can, if the shop does them. And then I spin them up on here. Um, and because it, with the take drops only, you get a centerfold ball. And so I then ply it. And then I've got um, a pin loom from Shack, a Shack pin loom. And then I make these little woven samples of my hand spun yarn. And I just I have a little notebook that I can stick them in. And I just, I just really like it as a, like a record of, of what I've spun up. And then if I really like it, I can buy a larger quantity of the fiber and spin it for a project or something. So I think, I think, and cause I just, I really like little things. And so I really like these little drop spindles. Uh, and I, I think they're just perfect to do a, a really nice quantity, a small quantity, but a nice quantity of uh, fiber. Um, you should definitely one week show that that book, show your um your record book. We'll have to wait until the end of lockdown. Oh, I need to check on my flat. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> an excuse. Yeah. That sounds like a necessary visit to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, you should, you should though because um whether it's because your background, your scientific background, you're very methodical, aren't you, about recording things. Yeah. And uh, whether I think that shows up, doesn't it, in your work, in your yeah. like, fiber? I, I do like taking notes. And, uh, and remember on, on the iPad, I haven't actually kept it up to date, um, but there's a, what was it called, notebook or something. And I yeah. have these little folders in, and you, so I have put, was putting all my projects and all my notes about my projects inside these folders on my iPad. And uh, I really enjoyed doing that. I should get back on it. I've just been neglectful of my record keeping recently so <laughs> <laughs> that phd gets in the middle of everything heather it does yeah <laughs> so gladys also said about spinning alpaca and um i think that once if you if you manage to get going with um some top which is the prepared if fiber that is prepared in a mill and um, that's what I would normally use to teach people because it's um, easier to spin. There we go. Heather's got some top. Um, so you see those fibers are quite close together. And so they're quite, um, they're quite easy. To, they're easier to spin. It's good, a good place to start off with. If you find that you get the hang of that, then um, I could say go for it with your, with your alpaca. The, um, I've had uh, people come to spin who've been alpaca farmers or somebody who's ended up with a with a fleece and we just get them going first with the, with top just to give them a bit of confidence and then they're usually away so I would say definitely give it a go with your alpaca um, and have a go with the, the things that we said have a look on YouTube or um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get out and about at some point and uh, ask somebody else yes yeah but we all tell each other yeah. Right, so then um, the second question is from Marianne, and Marianne belongs to our, our craft group, our Weaver, Weaver Pool, which is our craft group, and she's asked how to decide what fibre to spin, and that somebody had said to her that merino, um, was it she shouldn't really go near merino. Um, now, I don't know what you think about that, Heather. Um, it's it's slippier like when I started spinning I mainly for a short only a short time I did stick to BFL because that's what I, I learned with with you and then but then quite quickly I would say I started buying merino and blends so even if even if you want to try a BFL blended with I don't know silk or something I guess that's but I wouldn't I wouldn't avoid merino once you can spin I think Go for it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I would use we we always have used Blue Face Leicester um, because it's uh, a lovely a lovely fibre to spin with. Mm -hmm. um, the fibre, if I've got I've got some Blue Face Leicester here, and this is top as well. So this is this has not been um, prepared by me. It's been prepared in a mill. But if we if we pull that out like that, so that's that's the length of the fiber that's on the sheep and that's called the staple and so this is the length on a blue face lester which is about probably about say five inches upward which would be a mid to long staple of a fleece now i've also got some merino here and if i have a look at the merino 
it's not that different really it's a little bit shorter but it, it is a little bit slippier mm. but i agree with heather i would think to start off it's good to have something that's got like a bit of bite so a coarser a coarser fiber blue face lester is a, a soft fiber but it has got just a little bit more bite than than merino and uh, so um you know maybe that that's why the person had said not to use merino but i agree with heather i think once you once you you've got the knack and you can treadle and draft at the same time and you've had to go then just have a go at everything you know everything and anything yeah. and, and things will some fibers are definitely harder like i think i did yeah. find merino harder but you just slow it down until you've got the rhythm i think and um silk i haven't mastered silk yet though <laughs> oh haven't you um i've got i tell you what i've got this which i just found it in my my box and i don't even know yeah. I just had a route through i've got a big big box with bits of fiber in i thought i had some cotton in i was wanting to show but um this has got i think it's looking at it i don't think that's silk i think that is uh, no no it is it's silk so that's got silk in it so like heather says this is a blend uh, this is probably um quite soft so it's probably the um, like a merino and silk blend so that's a good good halfway house really isn't it to have yeah. a go at um i've also got here just to show you um this is soybean fiber so soybean fiber is super slippy and uh, there's a staple there so something like that you think I would definitely say stay, steer clear of until you've got your confidence. Yeah. Um, bamboo, banana fiber, all very, very slippy, shiny, shiny yarns and very much would, would be a bit much. I think it would put off a beginner. Yeah. 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 Um, but as for, so, so start off with, I think, um, did we say world of, we'll have to find out. I think it's world of wool. It does the English 56. Yeah. Um, which is just a blend of all kinds of, of fibers together. That's quite, it's got quite coarse. It's got quite a, a good bite to it, which would be good for a beginner. And blue face Lester then move on to your sort of softer Scotland, maybe Merino, and then maybe try a blend with some silk in. Yeah. Challenge yourself that way. Lovely. Should spin all these things, shouldn't I? Not just yeah. open around. <laughs> well, that's the same. Right. I'm good at spinning at the moment. Carry on, sorry. Okay, so the next one was um, Bongo Batty on Instagram, uh, which I think is Janet. I think it um, was Janet who came to one of my classes. She said how to make airy yarn. Her, her yarns that she's been making are quite sort of um, dense. And that will be because when she came to my class, we teach, uh, teach, worsted spinning so there's two different types of spinning and when i teach um it's called short draw which is where you, you it's it is what you know you you pull out short short little fibers and let the twist come in and that makes a, a yarn that is pretty dense doesn't it mm. and so and that's called worsted and what you you'll have heard of worsted carpets and that's because they're like harder wearing so that's what we teach because it's um it's it's easier to learn that i think when you mm. start off um, so what would you say heather about getting an airy yarn well i think you said to me before you'd want to do um spin with a, a woolen prepar pre preparation or if you're working from top you said spin from the fold didn't you so um so to get a fluffier yarn you're trying and get a, a a more woolen type yarn. So, if you, if you, when you've got bats or, or, did, or roving different types of fibre, how have you got on with that? Well, if I'm honest, when I get bats, um, I like to um, turn them into uh, as much like a roving as possible because that's I, I like um, spinning a worsted yarn. Um, but no, it's it's um, it does make. So, how would you do that? How would you turn it from a bat to a, to a roving? Um, so I can, I can do a tiny demonstration because I've got a bat here. Sorry. So this is a, a little bat, which is it's very pretty. And so if you fold out the bat. 
So the bat, a bat is done on a drum card, isn't it? Like, so that's how you get a rectangle shape. And so I would split it down here. So I'll, I'll just show. So I split it to the end. It'll still be more woolen than a, a prep. And then you get to here at the end and then you turn it and you pull it apart from here. And then what I do is I just then draft it, you know, right. and it just makes it a bit more. So that's how I do it from a bat. But then obviously that's not going to give you a more worsted yarn than a woolen one. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I thought if, about um, spinning from the fold. So what you do is uh, when you are spinning, you take your fibre and whereas before, if you're doing short draw versus spinning, you'll pull out like that, you'll draft like that and then it will twist. If you put your um, fibre over your finger and I think I'm going to do a little video of this and we'll be able to put it into the... Uh, into the podcast and spin from there so you're spinning from the fold and what happens there is as it twists air traps through because that's what it's that's how you get an airy yarn is the air gets trapped in your in your fiber and so that will twist from there but if you keep your uh, when you spin from the fold where the orifice of the the wheel is your finger needs to be opposite there and so the fibers will pull out like that and then the air will get in there so yeah. um if it is janet um if you uh if you have top and you normally spin from top then that's a way around it so i'm going to take the fiber the comb top fold it over my fingers like that and then pull apart and then there I've got my little um, my little bunch of fibre. I'm going to the put my finger opposite the orifice there and attach this fibre and spin from the fold. caught in between the fibres and that will give you a bit of a loftier, um, lighter yarn. If you're able to have a fleece and, and card it with hand carders, so if you, if you think of a fleece when it's been, um, when you've washed it and all the fibers all that will be all higgledy piggledy all going in different directions if you hand card them and then spin them from that the fibers still a little bit higgledy piggledy but mm. um but not as closely closely aligned like in top so the air is trapped in there so i'd say give those a few things a go yeah. i should have a go at spinning from the fall because i've never done it well, I did, I don't know if you'll be able to see, I did do a little um, little experiment with the, the, the yarn. Oh, here we go. So this is yarn that is, I don't know if you can see. So that's, that's worsted, worsted spun. And um, so you have a sheen on that, yeah. which is nice. Um, especially if it's, uh, this is merino. Um, so you, you keep that sheen and there's no halo in in the yarn and it is quite dense you'd still make a lovely cardigan from it or socks or um but there's uh, there's there's no it's not an airy yarn whereas this one this was spun from the fold and it's exactly the same height but i don't know if you can i don't think you can see can you but there's definitely more of a halo on oh, I, that i and think it definitely looks more fluffy yeah and it's um it's like a matte compared to i'll take a picture and then we we can see yeah. but it's as if one of them one of them's got a gloss on it and one of them's a matte. Yeah. And so then you can make, if you know that where you're heading with your, with your fiber or with your project, then you can decide a certain way to spin it mm. accordingly. So um, Bongo Batty, um, now you know your two different types of uh, 
types of, of yarn preparation you'll be able to decide start with your project and work back rather than just sitting there and spinning which is what a lot of us do don't we just sit there and spin and then afterwards go oh, what am i going to do with that yeah is that all the questions i think that's yeah did that's yes i think that's all the ones i have um so i i actually have some spinning to show i you know how I, last time i hadn't done any spinning i have actually done some spinning this time i haven't finished it and uh, i still have quite a lot of fiber to spin for it but um this is what i've been working on you can see it's going to be a gradient um that's lovely yeah and so i don't know whether it's going to be thin enough to make a four ply if i do it um like a fingering weight if i do it as a three ply which i normally do so i was thinking of trying to wind it off into a ball and then um plying it as a two ply because i'm going to stick to Oh no, I could spin on another bobbin because I'm only halfway through the fibre. I might do that actually. But anyway, I'll see. I'm just going to make up my mind as I go along. Um, They're beautiful colours though, I love it. Yeah, this is the, I think I put it in the last two videos. It's Hilltop Cloud and it's mm. a gradient pack and I think it was something like Hanging Pot. I should have looked that up before. But um, yeah, it's it's really nice. I really like the colours. They're bright but also quite mute, muted bright. <laughs> Oh, I've already been on the gin. <laughs> and then this is my next fibre that I'm spinning, which is um, going to be a rainbow. And um, this oh, is from nice. Spin Jones, um, who is based in Wales. But when I originally bought from her, she was based in Liverpool as well. Um, oh, yeah. And so it's a nice rainbow. And I'll probably spin that up and make a pair of socks from that as well. Just because I'm sock obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Like, the first time in my life I've ever been sock obsessed. But it's, it's happened. Oh no, I think they're great. They're great little little projects. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, oh, I've also got well, this, which is going to be a sock soon. Um, that's so, nice. Too. Yeah. So this is. It looks a bit more green in real life, but um, this is a bit more woolen. I don't know, you probably wouldn't be able to see yeah. it. Um, it's got a speckle, sparkle in it. It does, yeah. It's got glitter in it. So oh. I can't remember whether this was from Roving or a bat. Um, this is from Spin City UK. Uh, but yeah, it's got glitter in it. This sock has glitter in it as well, but it's just not getting picked up by the camera. Um, so yeah, so this is very fluffy and we'll make a pair of socks and it's iron weight as well. But um, this is actually a two-ply. These both so these both are two ply. I don't know what happened because I normally um, do a, a three ply as standard, but um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to doing that and having some nice sparkly socks. So. That does seem when you when you squidge that, then it does seem like there's more air in that, doesn't it? It's nice. Yeah, it definitely is compared to some of the other. Like this one was definitely more. Um, smooth this one's definitely more worsted and this one's definitely more woolen yeah it is very bouncy yeah but, um, can see. yeah so very nice yeah well um i watched um what's it? I don't, I, that program on at half past six on bbc2 about country fairs and county shows and farmers and it was it was um it's been a disaster really because i've ended up i was watching it and there was this man and he was um he was exhibiting Ryland sheep and they were his wife's flock that died and it was really sad and he was carrying on keeping them for her. And so I looked and I thought I would like a Ryland, Ryland fleece and now I am getting four of them. So it's very, very dangerous for me to watch that programme. So one of them came through um, the other day. Talking of um, fleet, uh, uh, staple, this is, the, this is the staple from a Ryland and uh, it's got a lovely lovely crimp but you can see just um from what we were saying before the difference between the two staples there yeah so it's quite short isn't it yeah, it is really but it's got a really nice nice crimp so that is this whole fleece which arrived is lying on the floor just behind me and it stinks i have to say absolutely rank so it needs a good good wash but it came from um somebody called uh, Charlotte, Charlotte Ellis. And I got, I got in touch with her through British Fibre Art as well. So 
Um, if you want to support a, a British um, magazine, and also there's a British fibre art, art group on Facebook, um, there's, uh, and support local local producers, that's a good place to start. So Charlotte sent me this uh, Ryland fleece, but she also sent this, which is the sheep that it came from, which is called Eve. Eve, the sheep, which I thought was a really nice touch, yeah. and uh, it's the Ronscliffe flock. Now Charlotte doesn't normally um, sell, although I think she would like to sell her fleeces. It's arrived and it's just as it is, so it's not been skirted, which is when you when you skirt a fleece, you take all the really manky bits off, all the all the, the dirty bits around the back ends and all that. You take all that off. So this is as is, so it's probably why it stinks so much. Um, so I'll be having a go. I haven't prepared a fleece for, well, probably since I started spinning, which is about 16 years ago. So um, it will be quite, um, quite something. And then when the others start to arrive as well. So I'm not watching that programme again. It's cost me a fortune. <laughs> uh, what's it going to be like? So I've, I've never heard of a Ryland fleece. Um, I, I, they are, they, the fleece is on their face as well. It's like, they've got like, fairy faces uh, they're lovely so um i don't know i don't know what it's going to be like uh, but i just thought it looked so nice on the program when they lifted up the fleece yeah you'd see how lovely and white it was now the next one is going to arrive is from a lady i think she's called sharon driscoll and i'll find out some more um information about her but this one's going to be a ryland jacob cross which yeah. she said is slightly softer than the ryland so I'm going to be able to compare, compare them. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. oh, I should yeah. keep a record, Heather. <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to say. You should get a notebook <laughs> and then you have, need a little sample of the fleece, a sample <laughs> of it maybe before you've, wait, wash it maybe first, but before you've done anything to it, apart from washing, and then a sample of it um, washed and prepped in the manner that you want. So maybe if you're carding it or whatever preparation you want and then a sample of it spun and then a sample of it knitted a little swatch of it knitted and then you need to get a little zoom loom uh, a pin loom and do a little woven swatch oh my god please do that <laughs> i do need to get a zoom loom because the the ones that you've had in your book it looks so good and it's such a good way of keeping keeping a record and you think you'll remember you think you'll remember how many wraps prints you make things you think you remember and you never do no. so it's a worthwhile thing to yeah. wear to get into the habit of doing yeah yes yeah, so, uh, lady if anybody yeah. sorry no no carry on there's a lady uh, who i follow on instagram called bren boone and um she has really good little videos and her instagram page very very inspiring how it hit her her yarn prep and everything um so if anybody is looking for some somebody inspirational to follow who does a preparation from the sheep right through to her spinning she's is, really good is it in america uh, where they have that um from fleet from the sheep to a jumper or something so in oh, a yeah. day or something they do that yeah. do we do it in the uk no i don't think so just in america that's what we need to do in, in future years um, when the virus is gone. <laughs> Just do that. Although I, that's take a lot of people, right? Don't they do it in teams? And then it's... No, no, we should, we should definitely look into it because we could do with having something like that, couldn't we? Yeah. So I think on the day in the morning, the server knows they, they um, shear the sheep and then they prep the yarn, so the fibre. So they mustn't wash it. I don't know what they would do about that. No, they mustn't be able to dry it in time. But anyway, so they prep it and then they spin it and then they knit it. And they have, I think they have different teams of people who like prep the fibre and then people who knit. And so as the skeins come along, they start knitting the pieces and it's the, they have teams for um, different teams, I think, from different places. And, they, and it's which team can get a full jumper the fastest in like, <laughs> or, or something like that. It's just incredible. So... Yeah, I might have I a think that would be great fun to organise. Yeah. Well, I'll have to, to get some speedy knitters. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> not me. <laughs> I'll do some spinning. <laughs> but um, no, that's cool. But, yeah. Brill? Yeah. Right. So um, I think, is that us? 
Are we yeah. done? We've talked about everything. I've got my book here. I think that's everything. So we put all the all the information about what we've talked about in the uh, in the notes. In the notes, and then I try and put a little note about when we talk about people on the video at the same time, um, so you can always just pause it. But it will be in the notes below, shouldn't it? Um, and if anybody's got any any questions or any suggestions of things that we can talk about, um, we really appreciate uh, people subscribing, and um, it's been such a such a surprise. And uh, it's it's lovely because it's obviously it's something that me and Heather are both very passionate about, and it's lovely to hear other people who feel the, the same about their their fiber arts, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. And so um, please uh, leave us a leave us a message. And um, and then we'll have a think about what we can talk about in a fortnight's time. And so until then, we'll see you. See you soon, Heather. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye.